What's going on guys? Crypto Renegade here again with another video for you and in today's video we are going to be talking about the Trezor Suite beta, the new desktop application that just came up with Trezor and versus the Ledger Live app that has been around for a couple of years now for Ledger. So again this is the Trezor Suite versus the Ledger Live app. So stay tuned, you're not gonna wanna miss this. All right guys, welcome back. So in today's video, I wanted to do just a quick comparison of my experience using the Ledger Live versus the Trezor Beta. Now last week I did a video on a dedicated video specifically on the Trezor Suite Beta. Now again, I keep saying beta because it really is brand new. They're still doing a lot of testing, adding a lot of new features. And one of the features that kind of bothers me with the Trezor Suite is the fact that you cannot even use it unless you have your Trezor device connected. Now if you take a look over here, this is the Ledger Live app and currently overall design here I can use, I can navigate, I can see everything, I can send and receive, I can fully use this without even having my Ledger connected. So that's a very nice feature and also has, you know, the discrete mode, which obviously I don't want to show my balances and, and things that I have on my Ledger Live, but on here I can also do the same, which is really nice, but I have my Trezor Model T connected here, and if I were to disconnect it, for example, right now, it pulls up this screen right here where it tells me I can't even use it, I can't click off of it, there's nothing I can do, it says connect and unlock your Trezor. So I now I have to plug it back in, wait for it to bootload, and then enter my PIN code, in order to unlock it. So that's just one of the few things that I'm noticing is a, is a key differentiator. Obviously when we're dealing with the Trezor versus the Ledger Live and the Trezor Suite is being that it's in beta, there's not a lot of features yet. I do like, as I touched on in the previous video last week, which I will link up here in case you wanna see it and get a little more of a deeper dive. But overall, I do like on both of them that you can have your balances and everything be discreet. On the Trezor Model T, which is obviously a different device than I did in my last video, there's still not as many coins natively that you can manage directly in here, but there are still more. Uh, there's an option here for a click all for enable more coins. Um, and from this screen here, you can either disable all or enable all. And I do like the toggle feature where it shows the coins, the native application, I can toggle it on or off and it will remove it from the interface if I want it. If we head over here to Ledger Live, there isn't an option to do that. So it gives you your portfolio, it gives you the accounts. But if I want to add, let's say I want to add an account in the top right here, there's no toggle button giving me all of my options. I have to use a drop down menu and either scroll and try to find it, which can take a lot of time, or I can try to add it manually. So um, Digibyte, if I wanna do it, I have to be able to plug in my device in order to add the account. Uh, I don't have my device on me while filming this, so I'm not gonna be able to do that, but it, it does take a lot more steps on the Ledger Live in order to add more assets or new coins to your dashboard and to your interface. Um, so that's one thing that I don't like about Ledger Live is the adding coins or adding tokens, the simplicity of it uh, takes a while and you need the device. Now granted both interfaces require a device to be connected to fully use all of those features. But again, I just wanna point out that the interface here for toggle on or off is super simple and I really like how Trezor did that to differentiate themselves from the Ledger Live. With that said, Ledger Live has a lot more features and it's a lot more polished. Very clean, very easy. There's a three button here where you can export to mobile if you want, you can export the operation and you can hide empty token accounts with a toggle, which is very nice as well. You can send with the interface again, it goes through the four step process which is required. You can receive the buy sell feature which is still not available over here on the Trezor suite, that's still in beta. But if you go to the dashboard, um, there is some options here for that they're going to be adding here that will allow you to swap and buy and sell 
If you go to the accounts here, it says right here the trade function is coming soon and that's just where you can swap your coins. Now that's very similar to what they have here for the swap on Ledger. And this is where using your hardware wallet, you can swap or trade devices uh, with a click of a button, which actually is really interesting and I like that. And it says here, by continuing, you accept to share your location data for AML, KYC. I don't wanna do that. I don't wanna give up that information. So, um, you know, that's optional if you decide that you wanna swap. That's not something that I personally use. Obviously, it'll show you a history. You can export it if you ever need that data, which is very nice. And then there is a lend option here. So now you can lend on the compound protocol or a comp. And if you wanna do that, you can lend it and earn interest on the Ethereum network. You just follow the steps uh, to do it here. You just click continue, withdraw assets. So you can uh, lend DAI, USDC, or Tether. And these are the current APYs that you can do. So this is a nice feature that Ledger Live just released not too long ago, uh, where you can give loans, you can request loans, and this is all done on the Compound Network. And this is actually a very cool feature, uh, something that I hope that Trezor does add in the future. Um, if you're familiar with this, again, the manager, you can't really manage anything until you connect or unlock the device, which I currently don't have on this video, but that's very similar to what they have also on the iOS app where you can manage, remove apps, install apps, do all that with your device connected. And uh, it's very simple. You know, it's, it's very, I like the interface, how clean and polished. I do like that they have a dark mode option here as well that's not something that they have here on the Trezor suite beta at this time you know Bitcoin Litecoin Ethereum you know you, you don't have as many coins obviously so if you're looking for the most amount of coins going with the ledger live route is probably gonna be the best for you uh, if you already own a Trezor device in the next one to two years I think that this is gonna be just as polished if not more polished uh, than the ledger live app that we have here on desktop uh, also, I will say that in Ledger's defense, they also do have an iOS app for their Ledger Nano X, and there is no iOS app for Trezor. Trezor currently only has an Android app for the Trezor Suite beta, as well as the desktop app as well. So uh, on the portfolio side here, they have different charts, one week, one month, one year. You can go through your different asset allocations. Uh, in my case, I basically just have Bitcoin and Ethereum on this device and then it has different transaction history, which is which is currently blocked out. But all your send and receive history that you have here, I like that they have this. This is very similar to what they have on the Shapeshift beta, uh, which is, as you know, if you've watched this channel for any amount of time, I'm a huge fan of. So if you haven't checked out the new Shapeshift beta, uh, feel free to check that out shortly. And uh, I'm gonna be doing another follow-up video on comparing that as well. But I just wanted to kind of touch on some of the main key differences. Again, uh, dark mode versus light mode, that's not a huge thing, but it's a nice feature to have. On this interface, you have to you have to add a lot more clicks on the Ledger Live app to be able to do anything. I do like the fact that with the Ledger, I'm sorry, with the Trezor suite, that you can actually just connect your device once and then manage all operations with the toggle on or toggle off. And then obviously when you're sending and receiving coins, like for instance, if you wanna send and receive Bitcoin, for instance, it allows you to do everything on the interface and then confirm the transaction itself on the Trezor Model T device. So I do like that feature that this is just a plug in one and it's very easy to kind of move around. So there are definitely some pros and cons to each interface. Obviously, in this video of the Trezor Suite versus the Ledger Live, I still have to obviously say that Ledger Live wins in terms of functionality, in terms of being polished, in terms of coin support, and the different options and features that you have. In fact, you can buy and sell crypto directly directly on this if you want to. Um, you know, obviously not that many, but you can do it directly and you can you know, connect your bank account, your debit card, your credit card, if that's something that you wanna do, and it will automatically deposit that crypto into your hardware wallet, which is a nice feature. These are some features that I do think that they are gonna ultimately add over here on the Trezor uh, beta and the Trezor suite, and things are gonna be a lot more streamlined and a lot easier. As you can see, the swap or the trade function is already being worked on and it's, and it's coming soon here. You can also add multiple wallets on the Trezor device. So as you can see here, this is just the standard wallet right now. If I wanna add another wallet, I just have to hook in the other device, or I can add on multiple wallets 
on the one device. So on the Trezor Model T here, um, it'll ask me to authorize. I, I declined it for right now, which is why it went away. But overall, I just wanted to point out some of those key differences, you know, in terms of the overall application or the overall interface. I do feel that Trezor Suite is going to come up in, in the next year to really try to compete directly with this and is really going to give it a run for its money. What do you guys think? If, if you leave down in the comments below, let me know if you guys prefer using Ledger Live on the desktop versus using the new Trezor Suite beta. And give me your thoughts and your feedback. I'd really actually like to know what the user experience has been for you all. I've only done a little bit of testing on both of these and compared with sending and receiving. As you probably know, I'm not a huge fan of Ledger. I only use Ledger for staking at the moment, so I try to keep most of my crypto on different devices that are easier to use. But for desktop applications, these are pretty polished and these are pretty good, and I anticipate that the Trezor Model T will only get better. So uh, if I left anything out or you want me to cover something else, go ahead and leave that down in the comments below for my next upcoming video for this. And I am going to go ahead and wrap this up here. Crypto Renegade out.